Hey guys, what's happening? It's Chris from Versus 3D down here at 3D Printing Canada. I am excited because I have something awesome to show you guys today. We're gonna unbox it, we're gonna set it up. This thing is amazing. Please hold. Fancy purple box. This is a Mosaic Palette Plus. Wait till you see it. Here we go. I'm gonna keep the box this way so you guys can all see. Once I get, it's packaged very well. There we go. All right, you have your quick start guide and QC test. I'm gonna tell you guys, I have one of these personally it's amazing. I'm so excited to show you all about it. So here's our cool box of stuff. We're going to open this up first, then we'll show you the palette. All right. Simple stuff. Power supply. These are some extra parts and I'll kind of explain these as we do the setup. USB cable, best driver on the planet. I keep this thing married to my palette. Some extra tubing, and again, I'll show you how this works. This is what's called the scroll wheel. This actually measures how fast the palette is uh, outputting filament into the printer and how quickly the printer is pulling it. It's kind of crazy, but again, more details in the setup. They send you a little bit of transparent filament just in case you don't have any, because this makes it really easy to calibrate the palette to your printer. This is the coolest thing ever. SD card, not that part, this part. They give you these 3D printed hooks and this metal rod, this becomes your spool holder with the box. Just get this out of the way and show you the baby. I'm gonna lay it down so I don't drop it. This is the Palette Plus. Let's set it up. Because we wanted to show off a little bit of this new 3D Printing Canada Select PLA. I've been using this for a couple weeks now and I gotta tell you, it's amazing. So, we're gonna set these up. So you just take your fancy spool holder. You want these to be rolling over. So there's one, two, I can count. Three. All right, and then we just drop it in. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys just a straight up splice demo. You don't even need the printer for this. We decided uh, we're gonna use the i3 mini. And uh, here we go. All right, so the first step to run the demo is you really just want to go to Splice Demo without printer, and we're going to just do a PLA four color demo. Now it's just prepping inside, and now it's going to be looking to load the filament. All right, so the one thing about the Palette Plus that is different than most other printers is you don't want to cut the filament on an angle. You want it to be a flush cut because it has to merge and splice the two together. So I already did these three, but just so you see, I'm cutting that straight across. And I find this fancy spool holder works great for used filament. So it's, gonna, it's asking me right now to load input one.
So now input two, I tend when I'm using mine to set them up. So I use one, two, three, four because of the way they're set up. So input two and three. There's actually four stepper motors in here, pulling these in individually. And four. And that's it. So now the pallet is gonna do its thing. So now it's just heating up. Uh, it does the splice at 230 Celsius. So what this is gonna do now, this is just gonna create uh, one single strand of filament using these four colors. Um, it's very handy to do something like this for multiple things, even if you're not using uh, multicolor models. You can actually print something really, really cool. All right, so now it's actually splicing. It took a little time. One thing I should mention, um, when I got my Palette Plus, uh, you have to do a little tweaking depending on what type of filament you're using. You can adjust the settings in the software um, or in the Palette Plus ex itself. So you may have to turn the heat up a little bit. You may have to turn the compression up a little bit, but typically their settings are good for most uh, PLA. And here we go. Here comes the white end. And if you can see through the clear tube, the red is, well, the not so clear tube, red is right here and there it comes. And you can see that splice is very nice. Um, this will run just fine right through your printer. So we're gonna stop it here, just till we wanna just run this through a little bit so you can see it. And I'm just gonna hit cancel print. And then it is just going to cut and spit out the rest. Wanna learn how to print with it? Check it out. All right, here comes the fun stuff. All right, so we're gonna set up Chroma to run the calibration print. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit new printer profile. Uh, it's gonna to ask to upgrade the pallet firmware. You don't necessarily need to do that. So I'm gonna hit no thanks. So we're gonna pick the printer that we're using, which is gonna be the Wanhao Duplicator i3 Mini. So Wanhao. My printer model is not on the list. That's okay. This is good to show you. So we're gonna call this Wanhao i3 Mini. So we've got a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, one extruder, firmware is Marlin, and it uses G-code. Our printer profile is uh, rectangular, the origin is bottom left. The printer has a Bowden tube. It wants to know how long the Bowden tube is. I think our Bowden tube is about a foot, so we'll say 300 millimeters. Oh yeah, it wants the size too. So we're at 150 by 150. Okay, so this is just explaining how the pallet works. You'll see this when you get yours. This is just telling you how to position, but I will show you that. So now we're gonna calibrate the printer. So we are going to download this calibration model, slice it, and then upload it. Now I've already sliced it, and I'm gonna load the print file. So we're gonna load the calibration print. It is analyzing. So now what it's gonna do is it's creating a file. It's an MSF file, which is a mosaic file to send to the palette. So you're gonna be using two SDs here. You're gonna use your SD card for the palette and an SD card for the printer. So right now it's done. I'm gonna click next and it's downloading these files. So now we're gonna calibrate and I will show you this on the actual printer. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna pick up from where we just left off on the screen. First thing we're gonna do is install the scroll wheel. 
this is actually uh, a really important step. This scroll wheel measures the filament um, length as it's going through into the printer. So the palette knows how much filament is actually going out. So it comes pre-installed with this longer exit tube, but because we're using a Bowden setup, we're gonna, we swapped it out for the shorter one as it showed in the instructions as well. So what we're gonna do, since I've already kind of checked this out, I know pretty much where the placement is for this is gonna be right here. And it comes with all kinds of stick on things. Depending on the printer, you can print out mounts. There's a ton of them online. Uh, Mosaic actually has a ton of links on their website. Uh, at home, I use mine on one of my CR10s and there's a mount that actually locks the scroll wheel right into place right onto the X stepper. So we mount that on there. This is very important. I have forgotten to plug mine in several times and wondered why my prints didn't work. So that just gets plugged in right there. Then this magnet goes on the end of this tube right here. And then this tube goes inside this tube. What you wanna do is you wanna make sure you've got enough space that this magnet can touch firmly. There's a sensor here on the inside of the plate. This magnet needs to be able to touch there, but it also needs to be able to pull about 15 centimeters away, centimeters away pretty freely. So I think we're good. So we're gonna put that back down there. Uh, one of my dog hairs, I have a dog. He's all over me. So we are good to go there. Now we need to start the calibration. So the calibration print is already set up in here. So on screen, we're gonna just select calibration, printer calibration, and then right on screen is calibration print, which is on the SD card. Here comes the fun part. This is actually work. So the first thing you're gonna do is load your filament. You use transparent filament and they're lucky enough to give you, you're lucky enough to get a section in case you don't have any at home already. So your first filament, whoa, your first filament you're gonna use in input one is gonna be transparent. And then you're gonna use any other two colors when it asks for them. So we'll use green. And white. Okay, so that's done. So now we're gonna hold the magnet down. On screen it says hold magnet down to keep me making filament. We don't necessarily need to hold it, but here it is. All right, so the filament is now running up through here and it's gonna hit the scroll wheel. Sometimes it's a little tricky to get the filament to go through the scroll wheel. Sometimes there's a little work involved. Or what I tend to do is I back this out and at this point, I will cut the filament on an angle. It's a little tough with translucent filament or transparent filament because it's a lot more rigid than regular PLA. There we go. All right, so that's gonna go straight through. and it's gonna come up here. Now, I'm gonna actually pull this magnet back. I'm just gonna ease it off while it's still making the filament. What we need to do is we now need to get this filament loaded in here. All right, so now the filament's in the tube. We are gonna hold that and feed that filament through. All right, now I'm gonna pull off, go back a little bit, 
is now starting to come out. So here comes the fun part. And you only have to do this once or sometimes twice. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to start feeding. So I'm gonna come around here. I'm gonna start feeding the filament through. What they did is they designed it so it's measuring, the scroll wheel is measuring. So the transparent filament is to kind of start the path. Once you get to the color is when you stop. So you basically, as soon as you see that color come through, you stop. So I'm gonna just kind of scooch down here and do this. Just gonna move the extruder. And you see the clears coming out. And you can see the palette is actually well, as I do this, this magnet is going to go back in. All right, we've got our first sign of green going on right here. So now we're done. Okay. All right, so now that we've got that done, it's going to ask me to confirm the loading. So I'm going to hit yes. Now it's ready to go. Now it just wants us to start the print on the printer. So I've already put the SD card in the printer and we are going to print the file. All right, so that's how you set up and calibrate your Palette Plus to any 3D printer. So here's the finished calibration piece. Nothing spectacular, it's just very fancy. It's the Mosaic logo. I didn't worry so much about the super perfect bed leveling and I didn't really worry about the calibrating the slicer profile. I just wanted to get the print done. But once you calibrate your palette to other things, like your printers at home, you can do cool things. Like this. Now these prints do take a little bit longer than regular printing because it does have to change and splice the filament. Typically something like this doesn't take any longer than a normal print. However, when you get into something very detailed, like this, this tends to take a lot more. It typically doubles your print time because there's so much splicing and there's purging and all kinds of other things. But as you can see, the results, totally worth the time. Anyway, that pretty much wraps up our Palette Plus. Stay tuned here. Um, 3D Printing Canada will be having them available at some point in the very, very near future. This is just the very first one that we got in. So if you have any questions, leave a comment below. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to click the bell. I still don't know where the bell is. It's, I don't know. Anyway, this is Chris from Versus 3D, down at 3D Printing Canada. You guys have a great night.